Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn about path variables in Postman. So let's quickly go back here and in this collection, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a new collection. Okay. And what API we are using is basically this one, which is fake store API and created by Mohammad Raza. So thank you very much, Mohammad, for creating such a nice and open source um, fake store API. So if you simply go to this documentation here or this URL and go to the GitHub link here, we'll get all the documentation here in detail about the fake story api and there is a website as well right so what this api is all about will we we'll, there are some sample products we can go ahead and add those products in cart and then all of that basic api testing details all of that we can perform here until we reach to the advanced level right so when we go to the advanced level of api testing we'll be working with the real api uh, which is which could be either trello api or jira api i'll pick any of those okay so now let's quickly go ahead and go to the documentation and see what all endpoints are there right so for example i find this github more easy to refer to so if you simply go and scroll down here okay uh, you will see what all endpoints are being supported available routes that are supported with this particular api so we can get all the products we can basically you know get a single product or limit and sort etc there is a post put patch delete so all the basic operations can be done here in the carts we have different endpoints and for the users we have different endpoints as well okay now let's say let's understand about the path variable right so if we go and simply get all the products right so simply to get all the products we simply have to go to this fake api api and then slash products will list all the product okay so say for example i will go ahead and create a new collection click on this plus sign and i will simply say rename it and i'll say fake store okay and within this fake store will add a request to get the products okay so i'll say get product okay and in the endpoint we simply put the endpoint there right i'll save it and let's send it so you'll see that it has returned 200 okay right and then in the body you'll see all of the basic json response with all the products right so you'll see simple so you'll see different ids and then different product with different description etc that are being listed here okay so this is basically how we are going to get all the product now the point of this video is to explain you about the path variable what exactly is path variable we have understood about the variable but what is path variable now when we say path variable as the name itself says path right so it should be something which is within the path right within the path so what is the path for getting all the products it is basically this url right and then slash product right so this resource this this is the basically slash, slash product this is the whole path to get all the products right this whatever products are listed are available here uh, in slash products now if say for example we want to get a single product okay so let's see getting a single product so if i go to get a single product i simply have to change or put a forward slash and then put the product id there right so for example you will see this is the id right the number is the id if we go to the response here this is the id right so you simply have to put whatever product you are trying to look for okay and when we say path variable it is basically the variable that will be replaced so for variable is nothing but a placeholder which will contain a value right so for example if i want to get the product details with id2 so i can simply say slash 2 right and i simply send it you will see only second product has been listed here right so only product with id2 has been listed and this slash 2 is basically the path of the product which is having id2 now how can we have this as a path variable or basically how can we so for example tomorrow if i want to fetch something else so is it good practice to keep changing the id here and getting the details the best practice would be to keep this particular id in a variable and then update that value in the variable right so that it automatically gets stored there so how we can put the path variable is simply after the forward slash you put the colon and then you put whatever so for example id okay so if i say id and then let's say save it okay so as soon as i'll do this id 
okay let me remove it you will see that here we have the query params already okay but as soon as i'll put this colon and then id you will see the path variable appears okay and the key whatever key that we are providing here will be added here and then the value right whatever value you want to pass in you have to put the value there so for example now if i want to fetch this product with id 2 i simply put the value 2 there and then simply send it and it will fetch me the same result exact same result as i was hard coding here now what is the benefit of this path variable that we are not hard coding anything anymore in the path right we are maintaining the values in the variable whatever key we have provided here we are putting the value here now if i want to fetch something else i don't have to go and change anything in the endpoint here i'll simply change the value here and send and the product with id 6 will be returned in the response so that's the benefit of the path variable now there is a there is a lot of confusion about the path variable and query params i'll cover about query params in the next video and what exactly is the difference between the path variable and query parameters okay both look very close and similar but there is a very you know big difference so path variable is just appended as a path of the endpoint but query parameters is basically querying from the list of supported values right querying something so for example there are five items i want to query something out of those five then that's where the query parameter is helpful okay now the next thing say for example i don't put any value here okay i have defined the path variable and then simply send it okay let's see what the response is so it said that it is 200 okay because it's a dummy endpoint anyway right but no response as such okay so how can we see what exactly what all details are there right so if i simply go ahead and see the console okay let me clear the console all right and send it again so now there was no value right so if you see here the colon id is being appended straight away in the request okay so this is what happens if say for example in the path variable you are not using or not passing any value okay so whatever key will be there that will straight away get passed and that's why we are not getting any response now if say for example i change the value right and then send again you will see that in the path slash 5 gets appended in the console and we are able to see the response here right move a little bit ahead uh, above you will see that previously it was slash or colon id when there was no value okay and then when i provided the product id value that value got replaced with the value of the path variable so id with the from the id this five got replaced here and this request got sent and we got the response accordingly right so if you see here with the id5 we got the category and that product response here in the response section okay so this is basically what path variable is all about it is very helpful when we go to the automation section of the api testing because we are understanding all of these variables so we can basically use all of this together in chaining the apis passing the value from the response from one of the response to the request of other that's where all of these variables become really helpful so that if say for example you are getting a response of five from this the previous request we can then pass this five to the path variable which is having a name id and then that gets replaced in the next request and we can do the chaining and end-to-end -end testing with postman okay so that's all for this particular video on path variable in the next video i'll cover about the query parameters in post so that's all for this video i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching